raw sql queries and stored procedures can be executed with the from sql raw extension it is very common that these queries and procedures require parameters on the basis of values entered by a user user provided parameters are often a source of sql injection attacks and in this tutorial we learn how to pass parameters in a safe manner first let's learn briefly about why stored procedures are used stored procedure is a good tool firstly to reduce round trips to a database secondly to make efficient use of the database team who can write optimal queries in the sql syntax in the sql language they already know they are already comfortable with thirdly to make efficient use of the database server because too many complex joins groups etc might be needed in a typical real world application and everything every such thing can take place in the database server itself and fourthly we can say that legacy projects often have many stored procedures already written into the database so you have to execute them using your c sharp side you are forced to do that because they are already written for into the database already first of all let us learn how to execute a stored procedure that doesn't accept any parameters suppose we have a stored procedure called get all items that returns a list of items first of all you will have to add a model class to match the columns returned by this stored procedure this has already been explained in detail in the previous tutorial so i'll not repeat it here now you can run a raw query execute dbo dot get all items as you are seeing here this raw query will run without any parameters and this is the syntax that you can use for running a query let's next turn to stored procedures or queries that accept parameters firstly the parameters have to be sanitized before they can be passed to the database engine this is for sql injection attacks for other problems also so some sort of standard sanitization is required secondly the parameters must also not contain invalid characters that can cause the query to fail because of syntax conflicts both these problems can be taken care of if you follow the standard method that i'm going to explain suppose we have to execute a stored procedure execute dbo dot get all items at s1 in this statement the name of the parameter is s1 let's have a look at the wrong way of calling this stored procedure the wrong way of calling this stored procedure is to use a string concatenation to construct the query string you might be tempted to do this but you should never do this because it is prone to sql injection attacks so how do we solve this problem there are two ways of solving this problem the first is to use place holders and the second is to construct a db parameter or sql parameter and pass it as the parameter value first let us examine the use of para place holders again suppose we have to execute our stored procedure execute dbo dot get all items at s1 in this statement the name of the parameter is s1 the code for calling the stored procedure has been shown here first store the parameter value in a string variable s1 this value is passed through from sql raw function by using the placeholder syntax as you are seeing here concatenation is not done but it is passed in a roundabout manner as you are seeing here it looks very similar to string dot format but it is not the same thing the function from sql raw actually creates a db parameter object out of s1 and then inserts it correctly at the place where placeholder 0 has been used there is alternate way of doing the same thing also the above code could have been done with the string interpolation syntax as well string interpolation syntax it uses a dollar sign to replace the numeric placeholders by the name of the identifiers in this code we have used dollar execute dbo dot get all items curly braces s1 in this case also the value s1 is converted to a db parameter and executed and let's now see where we can construct a db parameter on our own we can construct a db parameter out of a value and then pass it to the from sql raw function in this code 
we have constructed our db parameter of name s1. The value has been passed as the second argument. This syntax allows us to use various overloads of SQL parameter to specify direction of parameters, data types, etc. So we have a lot of possibility of fine tuning the parameters if we use this method. And notice that the parameter is now passed by using SQL placeholder at S1 in execute dbo.getAllItems at S1. So you can take note of this syntax. This is how we can execute stored procedures and pass parameters in a secure manner. Thank you.